Luke 17, 517. It says, one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law were sitting nearby. They also showed up. <laughs> it seemed that these men showed up every single village all Galilee, in, in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord, listen to this. I want you to pay attention to this. We'll go back to that at the end. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men, say with me, some men, came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. And they tried to take him aside, inside to Jesus. But they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. Say with me, crowd. crowd. There we go. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. So Jesus knew that they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question if this is this in your hearts? Is it easy to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man, I love this, is the authority on earth to forgive sins. He has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mats and go home. <laughs> Whew, man. I wish I was there. I would have my iPhone filming and recording their face expressions of those guys. Oh. Wouldn't that be amazing? Come on, just picture yourself if you are there. What is it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? You don't see that. You don't get to see the forgiveness of sin. It's an internal thing. But, so, but to show you what's the, re, the reality of the internal thing. I'm going to show you with the external thing. The external thing, sometimes it is an evidence of what is happening in the internal part of us. And he said that to them, stand up and get up and go. And immediately as everyone watched, the man jumped up and picked up his mat and went home praising God. And everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe. And they praise God, exclaiming, we have seen amazing things today. What it changes, what it will change us is the things and we see the amazing things that we get to experience in the presence of God. I'm not going to talk about miracles yet. I'm going to leave that for the end. But I want to talk to you about those four men, the man. Um. I had a privilege years ago. I was part of a church. I was um, one of the, we started a young adults group in my house. It, 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 it was an amazing time. It, not in my house, in somebody's house. I wasn't married there. I was single. Uh, at a house. And uh, we started with a small little group of people. And then, and then it grew a lot. And, um, and, and part of that, I was walking with this uh, team of, of guys. We were, there were three guys that I spent a lot of time with. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we, we formed a band. One of them was learning how to play the drums. And it's like, come on, you know. And uh, it's amazing how what God did with him later on in his life. Um, the other guy was our friend, and, we, and it's like we wanted him in the band, so he's like, hey, man, you need to learn how to play the bass. So we learned how to play the bass, and we formed this band, and we used to go to the Nyman, we used to go to Parksville, we used to go here, different places, just worshiping the Lord. And I spent a lot of time with them um, just because I love doing that stuff. I just love doing that stuff. And I haven't seen them. Uh, one of them, I haven't seen them for over 20 years, and they were in town. They texted me. It's so funny. I want to tell you a little bit of the story. It's so funny. I'm coming home from work. I'm turning into Burnside, and they are coming down. He used to live 
in, in at, right right above Burns there when you come by by uh, uh, close to my house. <laughs> And, uh, man, I'm bad with names and numbers and all that. And, uh, and they are listening to a song that we used to play together. Listen to, listen how it's the Lord. He's driving by his house, listening to a song that we used to play together, and they are turning down the, the, the hill, and then I turn up. And they looked at me and says, that's Pepe. <laughs> and it's like, and they texted me. It's like, man, we were just listening to this song. Remember, we used to play this song. It's, it hasn't happened in 20 years, right, like so many years. And uh, anyway, so we got so excited. So I said, man, I, I moved some of my schedule. I met with them for, for the next day for, for breakfast. We were talking. We were chatting. These guys are massive produ- 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 producers. You know, they do huge events. What, they are the ones that the two of them produce all the alpha courses internationally. Uh, they are the ones that do the videos and the, everything. It's like they are telling me all of that. And I'm like, wow. And one thing that affected me the most is they were talking and say that they were part of their group of friends, very strong group of friends. And they were saying how in that group of friends, some friends have gone away from the Lord. And some of them have divorced within the two months, the, 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 this last two months, three couples, so two couples or three couples have got divorced from their, from their group of friends. And so they are telling me all of this, and one of them come to me and say, I want to say this, Pepe, I've never said this to you before, but the time that you spent with us when we were young, at the most important time of our lives, you always spoke the truth. And it says, and throughout, man. Uh, and throughout the years, those words, your heart and your passion have encouraged us to remain faithful to the Lord. We both serve a church. We both love in the Lord. We, love, we both are loving our families and seeing our kids. When he's sharing this to me, I, you know, in tears, because... I never did it. You, we don't do things. One is for recognition. We don't do things just because, oh, man, I want to do this so they can do this. Sometimes you just, you, right? Sometimes you just need to be you. And I was me. I was as excited as they were back then. But I was always passionate about the Lord. When I was praying, he said, God, what do you want us to talk on Sunday? And he said this, I want you to talk about that. I want you to talk about, are you a conduit or you're a blockage in somebody else's life? I was so challenged. It sort of put perspective that the actions, the decisions, the conversations that we have with people can bring them farther into the kingdom of God or can distract them and stop them and pull them away from the truth. I was so blessed. May I give all the glory to God? Because if I planned that, it would have not gone that way. Are you with me, church? It wouldn't be forced and it wouldn't be the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But I, as I read the scripture and I see how Jesus was there, was in the town. Uh, Luke, who is writing this as a testimony, hearing the testimonies from, from, from different people. He wasn't there. You have to remember, Luke was added later. Uh, he, 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 he heard the testimonies of the people. He, the Holy Spirit revealed to him the things that happened. As, as, as he is writing this, he says something that the power to heal was in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he just came. Why he said this? Because he just came from, from healing a leper, you know, somebody with leprosy. And so, so it was evident that Jesus was walking out into this house and he had the power to heal. He just healed somebody. The testimony, the word of the healing just went all over the map and people were excited about this. It's like, wow, Jesus, Jesus healed this guy. We knew this guy. He's, he, he, he had leprosy. Nobody wanted to hang out with him and God just 
Say, he just sealed him. So there was a war in town. And then he comes into this house. The Pharisees were there. And the crowds were there. And the crowds were so um, excited to see what he was going to do. And that in their excitement, they got in the door. And they could not let anybody in through the door. And I was just thinking, and I see the testimony of, or, or, or the life and the decisions of these two groups of friends. The ones who got excited about what Jesus is doing, but they stood at the door because they were just observing. Versus the one that say, we will carry this guy to Jesus. And decided to be a conduit in his hands. Are you with me, church? The paralyzed guy, we have not experienced a touch of the Lord Jesus Christ in his physical body. His life will probably remain the same if these four guys didn't choose to, say, didn't choose to be a conduit in the hands of God. And it challenges me. Because sometimes in my excitement, I question myself if I am just at the door Looking at what Jesus is going to do. I am so excited. I come to church. I stand there. But instead of being a conduit, I'm just in the way. My religiosity, my excitement problem gets in the way of people. I forget sometimes that people are waiting for me to bring them to Jesus. And I come home. I come to church. And I'm excited about life. And I'm excited about everything like that. But instead of bringing them to Jesus, I'm just in the way. And there is nothing wrong with just being excited about Jesus. But I want to challenge. If, I, if there is a word that I want to share with you today is, God, ask yourself this question. God, am I a conduit or a blockage in the life of people? What are you? Who are you? What are you doing with the power that Jesus had deposited in your life? What are you? You know what? A simple being yourself. A simple being passionate about Jesus. A simple being you can change the life and the course of people who later on will continue in life serving the Lord. Are you with me, church? I love this part here. Let's go to Genesis 12. Genesis 12. You guys happy? All right. Turn to the person beside and say, hey, I think they're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look what it says here. I love this part. The Lord had said to Abraham, it says, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land and I will show you. And then he said this, and I will make you into a great nation. Say this with me. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Verse 3, it says this. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families on this earth will be blessed through you. I love this part. Because it teaches us something. That if the reason that God bless, the reason that God bless us is so we can be a blessing. Are you with me, church? The reason that God bless. He's blessing us is so we can be a blessing. I love this part and the promise that God gave to Abraham. He didn't say, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. It's going to be all about you. Famous in the word of God. It says people will know about you. You know, the Bible says that what we do in secret, he will bring it into the light. Have you read that scripture? What you do in secret, I will bring it into the light. People will know what you do in the secret place. For what? So you can be great? So you can be the great Abraham? So you can be the great business person? So you can be the great student teacher? Teacher at a school? So you can be the great business person? So you can be the greatest person? So you can be the great you? Or so you can be a conduit in the hands of God when he puts you into that place? Are you with me, church? 
If there is something I want to challenge you with today, it's to recognize where you are at and to say, thank you, Jesus, for who I am. Thank you for what I have. Thank you for the place that you gave me in this, in the, pos the position that you give, gave me here in this earth. I'm going to use them. I'm going to use it to bring people to know you, to your kingdom, because that's what I'm called for. I love that part where it says, I'm going to make your name famous. It doesn't mean, oh, my goodness, we want to be famous. People will know about that. The Bible says this, that I will bless, he says to Abraham, and so you can be a blessing. You will bless. He says, I love this part. He says, all the families on this earth will be blessed through you. You know, church, the families of this earth will be blessed. Through his church. This promise is not to just one man. This promise is to the kids, the children, the people of God. Are you with me, church? This promise is to the church. God wants to bless us so we can be a blessing to other people. I ask yourself this question. Am I being a conduit or am I being a blockage? Look what it says here in Matthew 10, 8. Let's go to Matthew 10, 8. Somewhere around here. Jesus said this. I'm going to read from verse 7. It says, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. It says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons. And this is the key here. Give as freely as you have received. How many people here have received from the Lord? How many people here have, honestly, I want to ask you this question. Ask yourself, how many people here have received from the Lord? A bunch of you raise your hand. You know why? So you can give. What you have is not for you. What you have is so you can give to others. When you bring the light into a house... The light is not just only for you. The light lights the house, and everyone in the house will be affected by the light. When you carry the light inside of you, it is not just for you. It is for everyone around you. People with businesses, the money that you are producing, listen to me, don't confuse the principles of God of, 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 of the Bible says that those who work will eat, <laughs> right? The Bible said those, God gives us principles that work, and God's principles will always work whether you're a Christian or not. Sometimes we don't have because we don't know how to invest. Sometimes we don't have because we don't know how to produce. Sometimes we don't have. It's nothing to do with God. It's to do with following his principles. But let's not confuse the fruit of the principles. Because if you are a believer, the fruit is for you to extend the kingdom of God to others. I didn't hear an amen here right now. But, if, but that, you, you, we cannot conf, get conf, confused here. Then because we think that we are seeing fruit, because we are following God's principles, then that's how I am blessed. I have money in the bank. I have investments. I have this. I am a prosperous man because I follow God's principles. But why are you doing with that prosperity? Because you will be accountable one day. If the blessings were the fruit, then Tom Cruise is so blessed. He's a great movie producer because he's smart. He knows how to follow principles. The people in the world, the millionaires, are blessed. Why? Because they follow God's principles. But everyone is going to be accountable, especially as believers. We will be accountable for what we have. Let's not confuse the blessings of God with the principles that work and gives us the stuff that we have. And let's use what we have. Use the fruits to bless and extend the kingdom of God, the local church that affect the families in, 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 in our neighborhood. Are you with me, church? Can you go one day and say, you know what? Before the Lord, when he asks you, have where the families around you bless 
Because I bless you to be a blessing. Or you were the only one blessed in this. Are you with me, church? I'm not talking necessarily about finances, but I'm talking about the blessings of the Lord. What is God doing in our heart? The Lord says, you know, give freely as you have received. Some of you know the word of God. You have studied the word of God. You have memorized verses. Are you putting them into practice? Are you bringing others to the knowledge of those verses? Are you bringing other ones? You, you have experienced healing in your body. Are you praying for other ones for healing? Church, if we are going to see a change in this country, if we are going to see a change in this culture, if we're going to see a change in our city, if I'm going to see a change, if we're going to see a change in our community, it's when you and I start beginning, start seeing what we have and begin to say, God, who can I bless with this? Who can I bring? I want to be like one of those four guys. I want to stand in the corner together with my brothers and sisters. I want to stand in the corner and I want to bring people so they can encounter you and experience your healing in their lives. Are you with me, church? Look what it says here in Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Come on. I love the paper, don't you? Don't you love that? Ephesians 2. God save you by what? God save you by what? When you believed. And you can't take credit for this. Oh, I love this. This is a gift from God. What you have is a gift from God. Say this with me. What I have is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that you have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Why? Why? Why he has created us anew? Read with me. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You are safe here not to come on Sunday mornings. After a hard week of work, and I'm like, oh, I guess I have to go to church. <laughs> and listen to that guy with a funny accent. Oh, my. Oh, I guess I have to. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I guess. Sure, sounds good. Let's go worship God. God created us and gave us his grace for one reason. So we can do the work. So he can, we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Church is not your calling. Church is what you do. When you come here, church is you. It's, it's what you do every day. You are the church. On Sunday mornings, it's just a time to get equipped so we can go and do the good works. Then God called us. Your commission is not coming to church on Sundays. I encourage you to come. Get in the habit of coming to church. Like the Bible says, there are people that get in the habit not to come to church. They find every single excuse not to come to church. Life is full of excuses. The Bible says, do not neglect the meeting together like many do. Are you with me, church? But church is not the ultimate calling. What you do tomorrow morning, it really determines your life, your calling, and your purpose. Are you being a conduit or are you being a blockage? Let's go back, and we're finishing with this. Short services this, uh, this, these days for, um, for the summer. Are you guys happy? Come on. All right. I hope you're challenged. It says here, I love this part here, what it says that the Lord healing power was strongly with him. In other words, is 
it was evident that Jesus was moving in power. It was evident because he just came from performing a power. And you know what? These four men heard about that. And these four men brought people, brought this guy here, the paralyzed, to be healed and be touched by Jesus Christ. 